fighting. And I'm still standing. And we're still standing. And we will not be silent. I am here to tell you my truth. from out state Missouri who put his hand on my butt and he was a member of my caucus and I didn't say anything that time because I was so shocked that it even happened but it did and but the second time that it happened it was I want to say in 2009 and um, the representative was walking down the steps from the second floor and he was calling my name and I was walking faster. I remember exactly what I had on and um, I kept walking faster trying to get to my office so I wouldn't have to see him and he caught up with me and he put his hands on my shoulders from behind and said I should have hooked up with you before I married my wife. Right here. So this is number one, right here. And this would be my number two. This is number two. Don Calloway. That's my number two. I withstood three and a half hours of tear gassing in the streets of Ferguson on a street without an outlet. But what you don't know is that I claim me too. And this is number three, right there, that bastard. And because I ignored him, he goes from calling me boo to calling me bitch repeatedly. And Representative Dunn heard that, and, Representative, and Senator Nasheed heard that. Both of them heard it. What was their reaction? Jamila didn't even respond. She said like one or two times, like, don't say that. You shouldn't say that. And they were looking for a reaction, but I never gave a reaction. And I did that on purpose. Senator, you know that you and I have known each other for a while. Um, there's something that happened earlier that I wanted to just get in the air so people know the seriousness of the matter. Um, earlier, um, we were all so privileged to go listen to the State of the Judiciary. And as I was walking um, from the front of the House chamber into the back of the House lounge, 
Lounge, um, one of the representatives in your district um, referred to me Which one? as... Who? His name is Josh Peters, one of the representatives in your district, uh, first referred to me as Boo, and then grabbed my arms, and then did a forceful embrace, I guess, that was unwarranted and unwanted. Um, I am very angered by this, first of all, being called Boo, and I'm very angered that someone thought it would be okay to touch me. So, but there's something that you said when we were coming up the elevators earlier that he also said um, that I did not hear. And I know you can't use the word on the Senate floor, but I know that you would not want your child or any of the women in your family or in your district to be referred to this word. Senator, I, I can just say, I plead the fifth. No, I'll say this here. Uh, the comment he made was very disrespectful, uh, to say the least. Uh, it was unfortunate that you had the encounter that, that you had with that representative. Uh, but at the end of the day, we have a lot of work to do, and I don't think that I should be on this floor talking about what happened to you during the state of the state. I well, have to get back well, to work. Well, Senator, this is important because you have a bill. Today you just talked about, what, sex trafficking? Part of sex trafficking is oppressing a group of people to make a profit, disrespecting a group of people and their human rights. Anytime a state representative refers to a senator as boo or uses the other B word that rhymes with which, that's a problem. I thought when we were walking down the aisle for the state of the judiciary that he would then like leave me alone since he was not on the committee to walk the, the justices down the aisle, and he walked directly behind me, and he wasn't supposed to even be in that line of representatives and senators, and he chose to anyway. And so all I just remember, instead of enjoying the moment, which is greeting other representatives as you're walking down the aisle, all I'm thinking about is there is this person who just touched me, who just called me boo repeatedly, who just called me a bitch repeatedly, who is trying to intimidate me by walking behind me and I had to hear his voice. Like just hearing the voice of a person who is in your space and who violates you and who touches you is like, it's further getting yourself, I guess, into a situation of discomfort. And I felt totally uncomfortable at that moment. And I felt as if I didn't have any power, even though I'm a senator. The Ethics Committee has met and made a decision on what to do. Um, they looked at three separate uh, parts of it. Three. Uh, one, the uh, uh, touching to the, uh, uh, the language used, and three, following too close behind. Uh, on the first and second one, they said that those were ins insubstantiated. Some people would not cooperate with the uh, investigation. And, uh, Who are these people? I'm not at liberty to say that. Uh, so there are elected officials who were unwilling to testify that anything happened. Uh -huh. Even with the the um, sound that was from the Senate, where he called me the B word. No, we didn't hear that. That that was not picked up. Oh, you mean the the back and forth in well, the so, Senate? Yeah. Not not him saying that, but um, the the rest that and that's the that's the second one where it was substantiated that. He said something, and, and there seems to be some dispute as to what he said. 
uh, whether it was Bo or the B word. He said both. Okay. Uh, as far as Bo, nobody said they heard that. The B word, we do have the, the testimony uh, that, uh, or the Senate debate that mm -hmm. uh, shows that he said it. Now, now there is also contention there as to what he was saying that with regard to. He just kept saying it. That was substantiated, that he said one of those words. Without determining which one. He said both. Okay. Okay. He said both. I'm just saying what the investigation found. Mm -hmm. um, the investigation then talked about the legal analysis required, required under sexual harassment mm -hmm. and that it must be severe or pervasive. Mm -hmm. uh, enough for the reasonable person to say that it would create a unfriendly uh, uh, work, working environment. Uh, and that uh, based on a reasonable person, could they work in that environment with that kind of behavior? Uh, the committee uh, determined that the that on this run of cards, the use of that word was not severe or pervasive enough to to. Uh, uh, go further, so they, they dismissed the uh, complaint. voices high. Raise them so they're loud, so people can hear you. Never allow someone who takes your power to get away with it. You out them, you defy the norms that are out there. You do not deserve to be touched. You do not deserve to be called out of your name. You do not deserve to have people who say that they're progressive and then stay silent. Aaron, you and I have a problem because there is a constituent who lives in the 13th Senatorial District who has fourth stage tongue cancer who you told that you don't want to let everyone know there should be a buyout in North County. Yeah, Carol, who had her tongue removed. Fourth stage cancer. She did an entire interview with me and said that you don't want people to know about the radioactive waste along Coldwater Creek because that means that North County would be absolutely vacant. So I wanted to see what your face looks like so I can identify you in the future. She no longer has a tongue, okay? Thank you. I'm done with you at this point. I'm done with you. I am done with you. I am done with you, Erin. I'm done. The next question is, the next question is, at the Boeing McDonnell Douglas site, Erin, when I heard what you said to one of our constituents, I was dismayed. I guess it was easy. Don't stop me. I guess it was easy to tell a person. I guess it was easy to tell a person who was about to get her tongue taken out. It was easy to tell a person who was having their tongue taken out to stay silent about people moving out of North County. I guess that was easy. Let her respond, ma'am. Yeah. Right now. Give her the microphone. 
I did a long Cox Street ride. I moved there in 